But see, it's a result of the inactivation of the promoter that drives the gene that makes that antigen, that makes that small protein. Okay, think about it a second. Inactivation means you had it and you lost it. Okay, we'll do one more example. HIV. Certainly, if you don't want to catch HIV, well, just behave yourself. But if you don't want to catch HIV, what you're looking at is a situation where you, there is a human resistance that is being found now in the human population. The virus that causes HIV attaches to a protein on your T immune cell called, the protein is called CCR5. Okay, there is a group of humans that now no longer make that CCR5 protein and they have a resistance to HIV. So again, something that in the presence of the HIV virus is positive, is beneficial. But again, what is it? It is at the lack of making a particular protein. You made it, now you don't. Okay? So what's the common theme in these two? And we could give example after example. But what's the common theme in these two examples? Yeah, exactly. And this is the common theme throughout all biology where we're looking at mutations that are supposed beneficial. It's a loss of. It's a loss of a regulatory site, a loss of enzymatic activity, a loss of a transport protein, a loss of something. Antibiotic resistance is another excellent example. There are losses of some kind of pre-existing activity. Well, now, how in the world is evolution going to go from the simple cellular amoeba type creature to the human brain by losing stuff. Can't do it. So when they point to all these genetic examples of see how this mutation is an example of evolution, you go in and you find what's actually going on at the genetic level and you say, well, if that's evolution, then you guys are going the wrong way. We're going to, in a million and a billion and a half years, we're going to be amoeba. That's what's going to happen. We're going that way. It literally is, it's a de-evolution occurring. The thing evolutionists struggle with, they struggle with the concept, <coughs> adaptation to the environment, whether it's human or a cow or a tree or a bacterium, adaptation to the environment is not the same, and I emphasize that, not the same as evolution to some kind of higher life form. The ability that this organism has to adapt to a particular surrounding whether it is resistance to malaria, whether it's resistance to antibiotic, whatever the case may be, the ability it has, the mechanism that causes that is not the mechanism that's required by evolution to give the evolutionary common descent that they claim it represents the history of life on this planet. And I have yet to give me an evolutionist, to have an evolutionist give me an example where it is. And even if they did, it would be, okay, one example versus thousands of the opposite. All the examples that Kenneth Miller gave at the Dover trial, I've listed them all, and every one of them, every one of them is the exact opposite of what he claimed they were demonstrating. Every one of them is loss of, degradation of, inactivation of. Every one of them. They're the antithesis of what he was claiming they were demonstrating. But see, Kenneth Miller's not a geneticist. He doesn't understand this. He just sees, wow, it's beneficial, positively selected, it must be evolution. No, it's adaptation to the environment put in by a superior intelligence creating being that designed, what would the superior engineer do? The superior engineer makes the, the system as adaptable as possible what God did, as adaptable as possible. Mitochondrial DNA, I'll finish with this. In each of your cells, well, most of your cells, <laughs> you have a little organelle called a mitochondria. The mitochondria contains its own piece of DNA separate from all the chromosomes that are in the nucleus. 
Because this DNA is in the mitochondria and not in the nucleus, it's very easy to separate and not have it contaminated, not have it confused with the chromosomal DNA. So you can do mitochondrial work separate from the chromosomal DNA. Also, because the mitochondrial DNA is only 16,000 nucleotides as opposed to billions upon billions of nucleotides, it's much easier to work with. You don't go cross-eyed trying to look at all the sequences. So we've been studying mitochondrial DNA for many years. Now, mitochondrial DNA being DNA, it's still subject to mutation every generation just like the chromosomes are. Okay? Mitochondrial DNA, for the most part, there might be some exceptions, we're not going to worry about those. For the most part, mitochondrial DNA is passed from mother to offspring, not from father to offspring. So your mitochondrial DNA is from your mother. Her mitochondrial DNA is from her mother back on and on. Men don't pass ours on, so if you have only sons, then your mitochondrial DNA is gone. It would only be from your daughters that it would go on. Because of that, they can then do reverse analogy, if you will, and they can develop phylogenetic trees or genotype trees based upon what would have seemed to be the progression of mitochondrial DNA into human past. Okay, if this is your sequence, okay, what would your mother's sequence have looked like? What would her mother's sequence have looked like, etc. to your grandma, your great grandma, your great great grandma, etc., etc. So, what a group of scientists did in 1987 is they developed a, a genetic tree of mitochondrial DNA and they concluded that all human mitochondrial DNA came from one woman. Now, they're not saying that she was the only woman alive at that time, because these are evolutionists. Okay? But they are saying that all the other women at that time, their mitochondrial DNA has now died out, and it only comes from one woman. Now, creationists, of course, really love this, because this is very consistent with Eve of the Bible. And in fact, even the evolutionists called her mitochondrial Eve. Now, again, see, this was not out of any kind of respect for the Eve of the Bible. It was a tongue-in-cheek joke. But what it's allowed us to do is we can go to the public schools and talk about Eve now. It's right there in the literature. See, so, so God's able to get in there, even you know, in the face of where they're trying to spit at him. What they determined was that this Eve lived based upon the mutation rate. 